and uh, we're going to dive right into uh, five-minute periods, and uh, I'll just jump right in. And, and uh, Ms. Meng, I think your team is involved in the international discussion, because plastics in oceans is, for example, not just an American challenge, but a, a global challenge. And so the, um, uh, I think the foundation convened the Business Coalition for Global Plastics Treaty. What is really the, the, the core goal of that? Is it to set targets, or, or will it have, is the goal to have requirements that each nation uh, basically says, yes, we're going to, to do X, Y, Z to accomplish those goals? Yeah, so I think if I understand your question, it's about the global, the UN negotiations around the Global Plastics Treaty and whether kind of the business coalition will be looking at um, nationally determined contributions or national action plans where countries are deciding what they're doing, or if there will be kind of mandatory components to the international treaty. And um, from EMF's perspective, and I believe also the business coalition's perspective, we need binding reuse targets on the topic of reuse in particular, but binding targets um, in the treaty itself. So rather than kind of having countries self-determining what those targets will be, of course they will be implemented by the individual countries. Right now, I believe the U.S. is is pushing to not have binding targets, uh, and kind of more set a, uh, if you will, kind of a, uh, uh, a happy talk about what could possibly be achieved. Um, but uh, that won't get us there. I agree. Okay, uh, Ms. Schmid, I'm I'm picturing, uh, for example, the the plastic jug that I have with uh, liquid laundry detergent. And so you spoke about uh, fully refundable deposits. So in Oregon, we have a deposit on bottles, a 10% deposit, and it's resulted in about a 90% return rate. Is it basically, is the concept extending that, that model to everything else, shampoo bottles, um, laundry detergent bottles, so on and so forth? So the system is about bringing the value into the package, and we know deposit is a very good way to do it without burdening um, the citizen. So yes, it's about bringing a deposit on everything. Okay. Uh, so um, we have a system in Oregon where you throw everything into a bag, and then the bag is, is, is tossed into a tray at a, at a warehouse and a computer takes a picture of it and immediately evaluates how much of those things are recyclable. And it's an amazing system to watch it in action. It works really well. But, it, but if, if that type of program was extended to other plastic bottles um, of all kinds, uh, do you see that as a workable? Has any state undertaken to really expand? Because it's really set up for you know lots of things that look like a soda bottle. Um, other plastic containers are maybe much larger, maybe much different in shape. But can the same basic system be expanded? So that is about building the infrastructure that is tailored for reuse. Uh, as opposed to recycling as we have. In reuse, every container are sorted individually, and this is what Loop has been demonstrated, not only in the US, but also in Europe and, uh, and in Japan. So the technology would be close to uh, what you're describing, but would be step up in order to be able to isolate packaging at a shape, material, and content level. All right, so I've, I've got these, these, these bottles right currently. Uh, some of them are reused the, that, through that system I'm describing. Some of them are reused, like the glass bottles that come, but all the plastic ones are essentially ground up uh, for recycling, which means different types of plastic have to be sorted and on what, how much can be rebuilt from them. But you're really, I think, if I understand right, saying the best solution would be for that laundry detergent bottle to be able to be refilled, that is reused, rather than ground up and recreate a new product. Yes, absolutely. It is much better to reuse a product that's existing than having to transform it even through recycling. Okay. So let's say that bottle arrives at a, at a, a central warehouse with other recycled plastics. How do we get that bottle back to the, the manufacturer to be refilled and restocked on the, on the shelf? Is that really a, is that really a practical uh, strategy? 
it is happening today in the United States and in other countries. That's what Loop is doing. So the way we the way we operate is to the point you're describing. We are bringing all of the bottles into a central location when they are being sorted and stored and clean and being sent back to each of the manufacturers. So the manufacturer doesn't have to worry about any of the, the complexities of the, the cleaning and when you have a, a, a big container of that particular bottle, you can ship it back to the manufacturer and they just throw it back into their production loop. It's absolutely correct. Well, my five minutes are up, so I'm going to turn to Senator Mullen. Thank you, Chairman. Once again, thank you for the witness.